Influencer rage bait is getting out of control. Say my time, TDM fans. Womp womp. <laughs> Hello you gorgeous donuts, have you ever scrolled down one of your social media accounts and saw something that made you so violently angry? Chances are you've been rage baited. In today's video we're going to cover what rage bait is, the secret reason why your favourite influencer is doing it, which exact influencers are using this method and how we can put a stop to it. So what actually is rage bait? Rage bait is a manipulative tactic used to provoke an emotional response from people people, usually anger or outrage, to increase online engagement and revenue. It can be used to attract followers, subscribers and supporters which can be financially lucrative. I actually adopt this method myself, this is why I mess my hair up every single video so you can purposely comment on this video telling me how bad it looks. Every single video, I know, I get it. This isn't on purpose. Now I'm focusing on what my hair looks like. I'm, oh, I've had a voice break, it's all falling apart. If you want an actual example of rage bait, it's kind of like me playing this sound for no reason at all other than to make you angry. Make it stop! Oh wait, I, can't, I, I literally can't make it stop. It's, uh, it's me using control of that. Apologies, guys. You get what I mean, though? Are you angry? Are you? Ha! Rage baited. Unlucky. 1 0 to calm. That's your pants pulled down. Unlucky. Now, I'm so intrigued by this subject. Like, genuinely, I've been wanting to do this video for months because I'm just intrigued why influencers do this. Now, I've been doing a little thinking, kind of researching on the topic, and I've came to a little bit of a conclusion. So, every single social media platform that you use, they have one goal, and that's to keep people on that platform for as long as possible. Everything you watch is geared to making you stay there longer. Another thing algorithms love is a engagement and that can be a like, a dislike, a comment, a share, anything where you have to physically do something. They love that because that's a sign that you're participating with the video and you're an active watcher. Now if you're an influencer or a creator, how can you kind of promote people to, to give you more engagement? You need to make people feel an emotion. You can't have somebody watching your video and just feel nothing because that's the worst sign to the YouTube algorithm. A little bit like what you guys do when you watch me, you feel nothing inside. Apologies for that, I'm working on it. Now, what emotion can influencers evoke out of you that is a lot quicker than happiness and trust? Anger and rage. It's trash! It takes a lot less time to make somebody angry at someone than it does to trust someone and like them, according to the YouTube algorithm, apparently. It's a lot easier for a new creator who wants to be an influencer to make you hate them. It takes months and months and months if they're making good content for you to trust them, for you to put their videos in your daily schedule to watch them. That takes too much time, apparently, for people to work on. Therefore, influencers have opted to kind of trigger you so they can get the instant gratification of uploading a video. They don't care if you like the video, they actually want you to hate the video because if you leave a comment, that's a positive sign to the algorithm to promote their videos more because they're getting more engagement. Oh my god! By the way, I'm so obsessed with like YouTube analytics. I hope you can tell this is like my passion in life. And what comes with these algorithms promoting their videos more? More views, more recognition, more fame, and of course, more money. In my opinion, I have a negative feeling towards rage bait because I feel like it's kind of cheating the system. Yes, it's a great way if you want to blow up quickly and, and get like instant views, instant money straight away without having to put the years of work in to build an audience. I get why people do it, but in my opinion, it just means your fall off is even harder and we're going to see in this video people that have adopted this rage bait technique and have fell off just as quick. Now in this video I'm mainly going to focus on UK creators as that's the people that we're kind of exposed to the most in the UK and one of the creators that adopts rage bait the most is somebody called Bevo. You might have heard of him, he blew up from uh, swallowing a roast potato without chewing it. Exactly, like how many people are going to get angry at this? This is like the exact reason he did it. If he sat on camera and just ate a roast potato normally, that is going to get no comments. That is going to get no engagement. So he thought, how about I just like risk me life? Because people are going to love that. People are going to comment on that. And that's going to give us instant money. And that's exactly what came with it. Now the fame from him not chewing his roast potatoes kind of died off. Bevo hasn't actually decided to make content that people will like. Instead, he's decided to continue with the rage bait just in different forms. Uploading videos like this. Listen, what do you think of TikTok? 
Is it a job? Is TikTok a job? No, Why? It's a joke. Yeah, I don't what, want to be when, on video. When I'm only 20 grand a month? I don't want to be on video. Oh my god. Like, every time I watch this video, a small part of me dies inside every single time. Like, bro, just hang the boots up. You're finished. Right, the career was great, short and sweet. That's all we need, now leave. Obviously people are gonna get angry at this because this guy clearly doesn't want to speak to him. And then when Bevo didn't like his answer, he just tells him he earns 20,000 pound a month. And of course that's gonna have a negative reaction from commenters. Kind of feels like just a flexing session rather than interviewing. Bro's doing street interviews for bread now. So. If he had an interview where he was being nice and he was like kind of complimenting people on the street, he wouldn't get that many comments. Therefore, this video wouldn't make him as much money. So therefore, he needs to find things that people can get angry at just so he can make a living. To me, that just seems like a bit of a sad existence. Quick girls, listen, is TikTok a real job? No. Sir. Why? I'm making 40 grand a month. Good for you. See, you can tell he's just bullshitting. It was £20,000 in the last video, and in the space of about five minutes, it's got up to £40,000. That's the greatest five minutes in the history of human history. What? 20k in five minutes? Bro. Paddy Power must have came in clutch. Now, after he posted these videos, these obviously went huge in the algorithm because the engagement was much higher than his other videos. Again, his views started to drop, so he needed to find the new thing that makes people angry. And now he's turned to pretending that he has to get a normal job to pay his bills. I've put the fries in the bag. I've decided to get a job. I thought so really, everyone wanted my downfall. Everyone wanted me to go back to work, so I'm back to work. I'm gonna use TikTok as like a side income now. And it's kind of genius in a way. I can't believe I'm calling Bevo a genius, but he's given gratification to these people that are commenting hate on his videos. So he's saying to the people that are commenting on his videos, look, you can have an impact on my life if you comment on my videos, which just gives more power to the commenters to do it on every single video so therefore, all of his videos get pushed up in the algorithm and he makes more money. He's got these people on strings and they don't even know it. He's just clearly lying because in the space of a couple of weeks, he was in first class on a plane. Bevo, what are you doing in first class? It's like, what even is this content at this point? Like, I've said this a million times about Bevo, but if he's not involved in some sort of humiliation ritual, then I'll give him a quid, right? Don't know if that'll help him. It's just, somebody's gotta have a gun to his head making these TikToks. I can't believe he's doing this off his own free will. I think we've got a new Marina Joyce situation on the cards. And if you needed further clarification that creators like Bevo adopt rage bait on purpose, he actually admitted it in an interview he did with Isaac HP, where he said he fakes everything on purpose because people love it. It's, yeah, because with TikTok, it's very, you need to trigger people, you need to get people chatting about something, and you have to see the comments, you have to see what they chat about to play on it. So he's literally just exposed that everything he does is fake. He does it because people get angry at it. I also don't agree with them that this is the only way to grow on TikTok. Like, you don't need to do this. You only need to do this if you can't be asked to build an audience. Like, for instance, with me, me and my girlfriend, Chloe, we posted content for two years, twice a day on TikTok, and that eventually led to me and her getting a Spotify contract, which was, like, a huge thing for us two, like, a big achievement. We didn't talk about anyone else. We didn't rage bait anyone. We just focused on building an audience, and I just want to tell you, if you are like a person that wants to grow on TikTok, you can do it that way. Yes, it takes two years, three years, four years, but it's worth it because actual good and something that you can feel proud of comes at the end of it. Moving on, another sector of creators that adopt rage bait to entice people to comment on their videos and make them more money is spicy creators. We all know what I mean. I just want to make money off this video if that's okay. People that get, you know, that bits out and people pay them and then, you know, they're the tug and dog god, you know what I mean? People are horny, guys. People are really horny. Now, I believe it's a little bit different with a lot of spicy creators. I believe they don't actually want views. I think they want impressions. An impression when it comes to analytics is basically how many times somebody has seen your face. Like if you saw one of my thumbnails and didn't click it, that would still be an impression. It's basically just your, your awareness. How many people have seen your face so then when they see your face again, they're a little bit warmer. It's like rather than having a cold call, it's like a warm call in sales. Sorry if I'm like geeking out here, apologies. I just, I'm like obsessed with analytics. I think it's one of my like special interests if you know what I mean. I believe their aim is basically they just want as many people to know who they are as possible so then when they kind of are in the mood to buy something off a spicy page they can just be already in people's minds as like oh yeah remember when I saw that person bang there we go that was lovely 
Is that what people say after they buy? I don't know. I have no idea. Now, there is this one UK girl. A lot of people call her a UK beast. I don't know what that means, but every time I hear it, it makes me want to laugh. And obviously, the main part of her content is making people so physically angry at her that they respond in some way. <laughs> Oh my god, Lord Christ, how am I? How am I? Somebody take the phone away. No matter who this is, right? If you're a guy, if you're a girl, if you physically, right, get your phone like this, you're, you're acting normal, you get your phone, turn the camera on and go, <laughs> you're, you're a bit of a melt, in my opinion. Sorry to say it like that, but that's just what I believe. A lot of these creators, like, good luck to them because they're earning their money and getting their bag. A lot of these people are marketing geniuses and they know how to get people to buy their stuff, which is a really difficult thing to do. But one of their main methods is they kind of lean into football because a lot of lads, you know, like, like football. So there's a huge target audience there. And if they can kind of tap into that and do rage bait content within that kind of niche, it's like the perfect mix for them to make more money. It's genius. It actually is. And she constantly posts like this. If our 63-man squad doesn't beat Wolves today, then I'll take on the entire squad by myself, if you get what I mean. 18 plus only, obviously. I'm not sure if I do want us to win or lose. Like, it's literally a win-win. It's like, obviously, nobody from Chelsea is watching this. She's not actually doing this message to Chelsea players. Like, do you think Nicholas Jackson is now going to miss every chance on purpose because he's going to have a chance with this girl? I doubt it. She knows that people will be so angry at her for doing this video because she's like, well, no, th th that's not what's going to happen. Like, people already, I can hear them already typing. It's like, what are you doing? Stop getting angry at this content. This is what they want. They're literally baiting you. This is a message for Drake and for Drake only. So Drake, if you're watching, hi. I've seen what's been leaked. It's so unfair and you must be having such a bad day. I mean, I'm able to travel if you want me to cheer you up. Well, Drake's just put his phone back on do not disturb. That's great. Obviously, like she's taking the piss here. She wants to rage bait people because if she really wanted, you know, to shag Drake, she'd just drop my message or something like that. She wouldn't post it publicly to TikTok, obviously. She's doing this to rage bait people and it's working. This has over a hundred thousand likes. Drake is not watching, dog. I don't think Drake would ever be this desperate. Drake is not gonna watch this. Yeah, obviously. Like, why are you commenting this? You, it, it, people think as if they're doing something. Like, they think they've got it. She literally has got you round your little finger. Stop giving this engagement. Like, look, she, this girl genuinely just looked at the camera then started crying. She's doing it now. She's checking they're still filming. It's pure rage bait. It's not real. Stop getting angry at it. If you stop commenting on these videos, they don't get promoted anymore. That's the only way to combat this. Some of them are actually funny, like this one. Miss England have arrived. Come on, England. Like, saying Miss England has arrived whilst wearing a dress of the Union Jack. Like, this stuff just writes itself. The United Kingdom is not the same as England. England's in the United... Why am I even explaining this? Am I getting baited here? I think so. <laughs> they got me. Fuck. She also uses rage bait in kind of other scenarios, like she collabs with creators that obviously would never have a chance with her, and she kind of leads them on a little bit. And it's all a little bit icky, if I'm honest. She's done it with Cal the Dragon, General G. Yeah, you haven't kissed it yet. I haven't kissed it yet. I did stroke it a little bit. Yeah, do you want to kiss it now? <laughs> This is a tough watch, isn't it? A guy called YJ and a guy called Jack's Fitness. She's also done videos with him. <laughs> it's just a little bit weird how she kind of latches onto these people. And she does it because she knows the audiences of these people will be angry that they've collabed with her. It's like the perfect way to rage bait in a different format. Now I've mentioned a couple of creators she's collabed with and what is weird is even those people do rage bait as well. It's like rage bait is so rife within the UK community. I don't understand why this is now the norm. For instance, this Jack Fitness guy, like a lot of people liked him when he first started producing content because he was quite a skinny kid and he was looking to build muscle. And it was kind of like starting with someone on a journey that a lot of people kind of start with. And then they kind of want to see what the end goal can be because they can kind of relate to that. It started off really positively, but then he just leaned into rage bait by not actually trying in the gym, really. Not taking advantage of all the opportunities that he'd been given to try 
try and grow his body because he would have discovered that doing this nice wholesome content doesn't get you as many views as making people angry at you. It's the same vicious cycle that all these creators get involved in. <laughs> Why would you start that video off with some girl dancing and then transition it into winter arc? What? You're just trying to entice people to just comment absolute drivel on your page. It's like, what is this clickbait? Are people clickbaiting on TikTok now? Oh my, we just got rid of it off YouTube. It takes so long. I think he's actually gone backwards from, from, from the before video. And this will be a conscious decision that he will choose to do because he knows that people will get angry at him for it and, and leave a comment. If there was a little bit of change on these videos, he would get nice comments, but there wouldn't be a tenth of the comments he would get from posting it like this. And he's found a lot of success from rage baiting people. Like for instance, he even does gym exercises really weirdly because he knows people are gonna leave a comment about it. Like, why is bro thrust in the air? Who does bench press and also shags the air? Like, there's no need to kill two birds with the one stone. Leave that until you're, you're at home in the comfort of your own privacy, you know what I mean? You're alone, you're having your fun time. By all means, go for it then. Not now, on camera. There's only one reason why you're doing that. And content like this just triggers people so much that they feel the need to comment. Bro does hip thrusts while incline benching, two steps behind, what is blood doing? So it's clearly working. Like this guy knows what he's doing and he's making money off these people getting outraged at stuff that he's doing on purpose. One of UK TikTok's biggest defenders of Rage Bait is a man called HS Tiki Toki. He literally built a career off doing this. Like I've literally just seen one where a guy's like, who would buy six crates? And then it swipes and it goes, a picture of him and his mates at the rave. Let me tell you about my brothers there. Yes, enjoy yourself, go out. But don't make it your personality, it's fucking cringe. I look at you guys like absolute melts. Go and make some money, you sad fuck. It's like in reality, he probably doesn't care about this, or if he does, that's just strange that you would put so much attention to it when it literally doesn't affect him whatsoever. But he knows by posting this video, that is such a large community of people that like to go to raves. They're going to get really angry at this. Quote tweet it, and then his impressions are going to go through the roof, meaning so many more people know him now because he's rage baited people purposely. It's almost like no niche, no sector on the internet is safe from people rage baiting them. For instance, in the car scene, there's this guy that sometimes pops up on my TikTok and he purposely rage baits by parking over two spaces rather than one. Excuse me, boss. Do you think it's bad for me to park in two spaces just like that? It's like in reality, why are you asking somebody this? You want them to have a negative reaction so then you can post it on TikTok and it blows up and other people can have their say. There's no need for you to ask someone. Better yet, there's no need for you to ask someone and put it on the internet. The reason you're doing this is because you want people to be angry. You want people to drive more attention, more engagement to your page so this video can go up in the algorithm and make you more money. And these are his most viewed videos a lot of the time. The top comment, I'd have scratched the car, you are a total bend. Yes, it is wrong, regardless of how expensive your car is. It's like, guys, please just scroll past. If this makes you angry, you can't just scroll and then you will never see that person ever again because you haven't given engagement, which means the algorithm won't feed you that style of content ever again. You're doing the exact opposite thing that you need to do to get rid of this content. Just quickly, guys, if you haven't already, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. You'll have plenty of videos like this to binge watch when you're bored and you're gonna be in this little corner of the internet we call the Donuts, the best community on YouTube. 64.9% of you have not subscribed to the channel, so fix that. Be a part of the community. Okay, we want you here. When we're speaking about niches that use rage bait, oh my God, cooking and food accounts on TikTok, these are like the biggest offenders of this. Everybody eats food and everybody has an opinion on what food is nice and what food isn't. So it's almost the perfect mechanism to make people feel enraged if you do something that people wouldn't have themselves. For instance, Candy's cooking. I've reacted to her on my Reacts channel, so make sure you go and watch that full video after this one. I believe now after watching countless of her videos she is in fact purposely rage baiting people by the stuff that she cooks for instance she made a coca-cola chinese curry 
you know, a, 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 a special delicacy in China. We can only thank her for bringing it upon these shores. And, like, she genuinely does, like, make a curry and then pour Pepsi into it, which is like another micro rage bait technique. Like she said Coca-Cola and he uses Pepsi. That's another way to drive engagement to a page because people are going to correct her on that. Like, oh my. Like, watching this is getting me angry because I'm like, what are you doing? There's no need, love, please. Think of the children. And she also mentioned that she cooks for a neighbor. So then that gets people even more enraged because she's not just doing this to herself, she's doing this to other people. Now we add in Coca-Cola, proceeds to add a can of Pepsi Max. Yes, she's done that on purpose to rage bait you. Why have you acknowledged this? She does other micro rage bait kind of techniques such as using the same tongs that she's using in the food to scratch her back, bearing in mind she's already mentioned that she's cooking for herself and her neighbor come on come on it's disgusting but clearly nobody in their right mind would do this and think it's okay she knows what she's doing she's been posting on tiktok for years now she would have got the grips with what does well and what doesn't. It's almost like people, when they realize that their content might not be that good, they kind of just give up and then just kind of fall into rage baiting because it's kind of like an easier route for them to get a quick cash grab. She also does content where she puts extra sugars into a can of tango for some reason. And like, she genuinely puts it in and then drinks it. She's clearly found this content strand of Picking something that is completely fine by itself and just figuring out a way to ruin it and it's working for her It's getting her millions of views like for instance this video that got 1.6 million views on the coca-cola curry is over one minute I can say it with like the average CPM She probably made about 500 quid on this video simply because it's been promoted more on the algorithm It's got 1.6 million views because people have engaged with it if she cooked a nice curry This video would have got about 3,000 views and many other cooking channels adopt this exact same strategy to make money. For instance, a couple of months back, there was an account which blew up called Auntie Jackie. Oh, come on, man. Oh, come on. Oh, think of your intestines, man. Imagine that coming out the other end. I don't even want to think. I don't even want to know. Christ, like, the plumber must be round every single month to unblock that toilet. Like, the person behind this account also put on a stupid voice because, guess what? Stupid voice equals more comments. So tonight I'm making my husband a cheese roasty look. We love cheese roasties, we do. It's just shite. It's just utter garbage. Now, I believe that one actually is a parody account, like its main source is to be a parody account, there's no seriousness behind it. However, I've also done a video on my Reacts channel on another restaurant, which is called Rebecca's Chinese Takeaway. Now this is very much a serious business, this is a business she set up as like a sole trader, but she just feeds into rage bait. She puts on this really high pitch voice and people constantly comment, which drives more engagement, which drives more views and more money. It's the same cycle. Why are we keep falling for this? So this is what she sounds like in our most recent videos. Let's buy this customer's order and then another straight after. So first, this customer ordered one portion of our salt and pepper chicken nugget. So right, she sounds a little bit like a like a mystical pixie. Do you know what I mean? Like a like a someone that would grant you three wishes or something. A voice somebody just normally wouldn't speak at. And if you go back to her old videos, she doesn't speak like this. She speaks normally. So I'll be well ago. I seen someone went and commented on one of our videos asking if they could just come into our shop and order a slushy. So that's her normal voice. But she found that people commented saying that her voice sounds a little strange so she's really just fed into that because she knows that it'll make her videos perform better it's rage bait she's baiting you into commenting even chinese takeaways are doing this nobody is safe now all of these accounts that i've previously mentioned what i find so interesting is you can see a direct correlation from when they're not rage baiting to when they are rage baiting when they aren't rage baiting their views are so much lower like significantly lower than when they're making people angry so if this is your full-time job this is why a lot of these influencers influencers lean into this because from a business point of view which one are you gonna do the one that makes you more money or the one that makes you less money the one that allows you to pay your bills or the one where you're struggling to pay your bills when you've built your entire platform on rage baiting it's so hard to get out of that vicious cycle that whenever your views are going down and your money is going down and then bills are coming up they just turn back 
to doing it. It's like they can never escape it because they've never took the years and the time to build up an actual community of people that are there for them and for their content. God, I'm so passionate about this. I can feel the passion run through me veins. Oh. Now, as you've saw, a lot of the creators that I have mentioned are smaller creators. They're kind of big on like one platform and you can kind of see why some of them would rage bait if they want to get, you know, like a quick boost in subscribers, etc. You can see the theory behind it. However, when I think rage bait is really weird is when large creators use this. People that are already established, people that are thriving in the community. They just get greedy and they want even more impressions, so they turn to rage bait. One of the most recent examples of this I've saw is KSI. Like, KSI is using rage bait and taking it to a new level. I don't know if you've seen his back and forth with Dan TDM on Twitter, but KSI has been going absolute ham towards Dan TDM. So Mr. Beast, KSI and Logan Paul recently launched a product called Lunchly, and Dan TDM decided to do a quote tweet when the tweet went out. What happened to YouTubers, man? I can't not say anything anymore. This is selling stuff for the sake of me making money. Simple. How does this benefit their fans? This is selling crap to kids who don't know better than to trust the people who are selling it to them. Do better. So obviously Dan TDM felt quite passionate about this for him to actually write out this tweet and post it. And I feel like KSI was well within his rights to respond to this tweet. Like someone's made a tweet like dissing something that you've made. Fair play. Respond. Do a tweet back. But instead KSI decided to write countless tweets and I'm talking about like double figures the amount of times this man has reacted to Dan TDM's one tweet. Looks like crap to me whilst posting photos of like products that Dan TDM has released for his audience. He also made a tweet where Dan TDM promoted chocolate products even though Dan TDM wasn't claiming the chocolate to be healthy but I'm not I'm not responding. I'm not getting rage baited here. There was also a tweet where Marcus Brownlee was promoting a product that he himself was launching and KSI decided to copy Dan TDM DM's exact tweet and quote Marcus Brownlee's tweet with it. And then on the end, he decided to say, Some dumbass YouTuber said this exact same thing to me the other day. Rather than complaining, crying, and trying to cancel a YouTuber for creating a product, he has an idea. If you don't want or like a product, just don't buy it. Simple. So at this point, right, just quit. Right, there's no need to kind of keep going. You've said your piece. But he kept going. He wrote a tweet that said, A lot has happened these past few days online, so here I am addressing everything below. And then he put a link to myapology.co.uk and I believe that it was just a, a pre-save link for his new single that he was dropping. He also quoted a tweet where Kai Sanat collabed with McDonald's saying, Dan TDM, where you at? He also then directly tweeted Dan TDM. Hello, Dan TDM. Why don't you come over to the sidecast? Let's talk this out like men. Dan TDM then didn't respond to this, I believe, so KSI quote tweeted his own tweet, saying, No reply publicly or privately. It's obvious you tweeted just for likes, interactions, and to be seen as a white knight. And before your stupid minions reply or meme me, you started this. I'm just trying to finish it. Now, I am going to review the impressions of all these tweets, but I just want to say on this single one, he's literally directly enticing Dan TDM's fans to comment. He wants it. He's literally revealing in this tweet, please reply to this. And then again, he said, these stupid fans leave trash comments on my new song, think they're getting to me. You're not. It's not funny. It's boring. You're wasting your time. Again, people are going to look at that and go, oh my God, KSI's affected. Oh my God, we're getting to him. Whereas in reality, he's basically saying to people, go on, go and comment more stuff. Like this is getting to us. Like go on, comment. I want more interaction on my song. So it gets pushed more. KSI deep down might be a little bit angry at this, which has kind of stemmed the first couple of tweets. But I honestly believe he is just using rage bait. This is not how he actually feels. He is just baiting people to increase his engagement. Now, if you look at a tweet where he's promoting his new single, it gets 2.9 million impressions, which is a hell of a lot of impressions. That's enough impressions. That's a lot of free promotion. Yet the one where he directly tweeted at Dan TDM got 78 million impressions. The difference is insane. And it makes KSI no better than these previous creators that we've talked about. He's literally saw that Rage Bait is the way to get more impressions for his new single, to promote his new single so that he makes more money and the label is more happier with him. Of course he's going to use Rage Bait. It's not even a 
contest at this point. Again, if you need another example, he wrote a tweet where he kind of included a video that Jake Paul had made where he was taking the piss out of his song. The hate on my new song is so forced. So that might be a genuine opinion he has that got 5.6 million impressions. Again, a hell of a lot of impressions. However, you contrast that with the tweet he wrote where he said, Dan TDM, where you at? That got 25 million impressions. Again, it's no contest. In reality, why would KSI promote his song in like a normal way when he can get triple, quadruple, like 10 times the amount of promotion? just being a bit of a twat. By the way, I am speaking purely from a business perspective here. Obviously, if you're a fan of KSI, this is like drastic for you because you're gonna be getting cooked so much. I also dived a little bit deeper into the analytics of like people searching KSI's name since he started rage baiting. And you can see the exact moment that KSI started rage baiting because look at this graph. It's unbelievable like the amount of this is the amount of people like searching and like the interest in his name it's skyrocketed the man is literally playing everyone here he's getting people really angry at him which means he singles getting even more promotion than it would have got if he just promoted it normally it's led to the point that if you go on KSI's music video it's number one trending on music on the entirety of YouTube and this is because it's got 56,000 comments do you realize how insane that is I don't have the plugin where you can see how many dislikes a video has got because it's never accurate and I don't actually believe in it. But I guarantee the dislikes on this are very high, but he won't care because this has already proved to his label or whoever is managing his music career that clearly this single's working. It's like the comments on it, all of the comments are just hating. Honestly, if it had a different beat, different melody, different lyrics, different sound effects, different artists, different theme, different message, and a different genre, it could have gone hard. Why is this copyrighted? It ain't like anyone's gonna use this shit. And the crowd fucking left the stadium. The club about to be on their phones with this one. Disney actors then versus now art music. <laughs> the comments are so funny. Bro made a 2016 song in 2024. We could use this to get confessions out of serial killers. People are just clowning on this song. But KSI has successfully like baited these people into giving them interaction and giving them engagement. I know that this is not a good method. This is not a positive thing to do. But if all KSI wants is analytical success he's he's done it he's completed it he's just give away all of his pride everything that made people like him in return for more success that's all he's done and it's a little bit sad because he doesn't need to do this this song would have done well by itself with just using normal promotion that he would normally use but unfortunately that's just the kind of times we're living in where even people like KSI are using rage bait and turning to this method. On the back of this, his product Lunchly, like that is getting promoted so much more. There's people making videos on KSI every single day. People are making videos on KSI because of one tweet. The amount of videos I've seen where it's KSI's face and then a white background with a tweet on is genuinely insane. Like these videos are getting hundreds of thousands, millions of views. Like this is all free promotion motion for what KSI's got going on at the minute. There's a reason that KSI has literally released Lunchly and has a new single coming out when he's doing this rage baiting. He wouldn't do this if he didn't have something to promote and people are just falling into it. And still to this day, he's continuing to do it. Like he even did a response video. You know, f first of all, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to say something. <laughs> Stay my time, TDM fans. Womp womp. <laughs> so this guy has just baited everyone by saying he's releasing an apology, and then he's just mentioned Lunchly Prime, and then people are gonna go and like listen to his new song. The guy is constantly just making use of rage bait. And by the way, this I hope this doesn't come across like I'm like lauding KSI for this or like licking his ass. I don't like the fact that he's doing this. I think it's like weird. I don't think it's particularly funny. I just think it's effective. That's the only thing I'm trying to point out here. If you don't agree with me and you don't think that KSI is doing this on purpose, he even admitted to it on a podcast. I just do it because I know it pisses people off. It wasn't funny. It's not funny. funny. No, nah, bro, it's it was it's great. I'm using his promo for my song. You're not rattling Dan, you're rattling his fr YouTube His fans, fans. that's yeah. it. No, but, it's not Dan, it's but Dan. Fan. Like, even his own friends are saying, mate, it's, it's like literally never been funny. Like, this is genuinely, like, 
terrible content that you posted out here. Like his own friends are saying this, this isn't even coming from me, somebody that has no interaction with them. And it's like what I said earlier in this video, he's kind of just like swallowed all his pride and just kind of used this kind of sellout technique to promote his music. Because at the end of the day, like you can just tell that KSI probably cares a lot about money and he wants to be as rich as possible. And clearly he's not that bothered about making good content anymore. Like his main focus is just to kind of make as much money before, I don't know, before he leaves or does whatever he has planned. I do find it interesting that KSI is using it though because I have thought, would his song and would Lunchly actually do that well if he wasn't rage baiting? Like, I want to leave that in the comments for you to decide. Like, do you think that people would like this product enough to tell other people and like spread word of mouth where the same impressions would have still been created? I think it's an interesting thing to kind of discuss, but I honestly don't believe it would have reached that point. Like, I actually thought that KSI was rage baiting when he posted a clip from his new song on Twitter. From the screen to the ring to the pen to the king Where's my crown? That's why bling Always draw my ring like genuinely when I first watched that I was like oh he's he's not actually going to include this verse in the song that's just to get people riled up so that they go and listen to it but no this is actually in the actual song which uh that was that took me by surprise I don't know if people thought the same but the comments on it were successfully baited but I mean it worked to drive attention to the song like the amount of comments on this song is just mental this song saved me I've been suffering from a severe depression episode when the KSI song came on the radio I got out of my bed for the first time in three months to turn it off so obviously people are you know they're uh, they're having a great time listening to this but yeah when I saw that clip I was like wow KSI is really doubling down on this rage bait stuff but that actually wasn't rage bait I, I feel like I've been successfully bared here. But yeah, let me know what you thought about this video because I really, really enjoy doing this. Like, I'm just so intrigued by this entire kind of concept of rage bait. Let me know what you think of what I've discussed and if you kind of think rage bait is actually not that bad of a thing for creators to do. If this video gets 5,000 likes, I'll do more topics like this video. And if you want to watch me break down another situation, click this video right here because the stuff in this video is absolutely mental. Or watch one of my videos on the creators I've discussed previously on my Reacts channel right here. Bye-bye, Don.